I'm going back to my parents' place for a while, I said. If that's the case, don't bother coming back, my husband snapped. Here's the divorce papers. They're already filled out. Take them and get out. He threw the papers at me, and without a word, I took them and went straight to City Hall to submit them. Little did he know, he would soon regret this decision. My name is Jessica, and I am 28 years old. I had been married to Bob, who is 30, for a year. Before our marriage, I worked as a freelance graphic designer from home while Bob worked in the sales department. I met Bob two years ago when I was feeling down after a breakup. A friend introduced us, and although I wasn't looking to date anyone, Bob had already fallen for me after seeing my pictures. I don't mind starting as friends, he said, asking me out. During our outings, Bob's kindness won me over, and before I knew it, I had fallen in love with him. Once I shared my feelings, we started dating. Six months later, Bob proposed, and we got married. Jessica, you're a lucky woman. You've been chosen by me, the ace salesperson at the company, chased by many girls. Bob would often boast after we got married. Indeed, he was the star of the sales department and quite handsome. However, his constant writing started to bother me. At the time, though, I found it endearing. Love is indeed blind. I adored my confident, kind, and strong husband Bob. Though we hadn't yet started a family, I cherished every moment spent with him. However, a year into our marriage, I encountered a problem. Jessica, when will I get to see my grandchild? That was my mother-in-law. From the moment we married, she began pressing us about starting a family every time we visited. Given that their house was just a short 15-minute drive away, we ended up having dinner there several times a month, enduring her persistent reminders. We're still young, and we want to enjoy our time together a bit longer, I replied. Upon hearing this, my mother-in-law let out an audible sigh. You say you're young, but you'll be 30 soon. I'll give you another year. But that's it. You should start having babies soon. It won't get any easier. When I married into this family, I got pregnant right away. Besides, you're just sitting around at home, aren't you? It seemed my mother-in-law had never really acknowledged my job since before I married Bob, perhaps because few work-from-home options existed back then. Furthermore, the reason we hadn't started a family yet was because Bob insisted on us enjoying more time together, just the two of us. No, that's not true. I work diligently from home. I've told you before, I earn nearly as much as Bob, I argued. Isn't Bob just covering for you? You're just fooling around, she retorted. That's not true. Bob, please say something, I pleaded. Huh? Oh, Bob seldom intervened in these situations. According to him, there's no point arguing with mom. She doesn't listen, so it's a waste of time. Just let her talk and don't take it too seriously. Even though I was upset, I wished he would stand up for me more. Instead, he sat on the couch, absorbed in his phone, barely engaging in the conversation. Well, you can play around all you want, but since you have so much time on your hands, you should fulfill your duties as a wife. If you don't have a baby within this year, I may have to ask you to leave Bob, she declared. What? I exclaimed. It's simple. Bob is our only child. We need a daughter-in-law who can produce an heir, she explained. My husband remained silent, offering no defense while I faced this criticism. Fuming with anger, I confronted him as soon as we got home. Why did you say anything back there? You're the one who keeps saying we should wait to have children. You need to stand up to your mother, I demanded. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mom's just stuck in her old ways. She can't let go of the idea that we should have a baby right after getting married, he replied. I understand that, but can't you speak up for me with your mother? I implored. Like I said, Mom's stubborn. It won't make a difference what I say. Remember, Jess, just nod along and it'll blow over, he replied. But she threatened divorce if I don't get pregnant this year, I said. Don't worry about that. She's just trying to scare you, he assured me. By the way, not because of what she said but I actually want us to start thinking about having a baby. Why are you so hesitant? I'm not opposed to it. I just want more time for just us two. Once we have a baby, you'll be completely focused on the baby and we won't have time alone, he explained, hugging me. I found his concern endearing and hugged him back. However, despite his words at home, he never supported me when we visited his parents. After that, his mother began calling me daily to inquire if I was pregnant yet. I grew weary of this constant pressure. I had never confided in her before to avoid putting my husband in a bad light, but I had reached my breaking point. 
Finally, I explained to her that Bob wasn't ready for children yet, but she brushed it off. That's because you're making Bob say that. He would never say such a thing, she insisted. That's not true. Bob is the one who wants to wait. I want a baby too, I asserted. Oh really, Bob, is that true? She turned to him. Uh no, that's not exactly it. I mean, I do think we should enjoy just the two of us a bit longer, and Jessica is okay with that. He stumbled through his response. I was stunned by his words. While I agreed with Bob's desire to wait, his response made it sound like I had missled his mother about wanting a baby. As expected, his mother shot me a disapproving look after hearing his wavering answer. You see, even Jessica agrees with me. Now, please hurry up and have a baby. Don't keep us waiting, she insisted. In the end, I was the one who took the blame. When I confronted Bob at home about how he had spoken to me, he simply said, I'll handle it better next time, but never brought it up again. Lately, I've been feeling increasingly anxious, wondering why I had to endure such treatment. There was a reason behind Bob's reluctance to have children, though. The truth came to light on a particular day off. It was one of those days when Bob spent time with his friends, leaving me home alone. Initially, I lounged around, dreading the upcoming visit to my in-laws and anticipating more criticism from my mother-in-law. With Bob away, I decided to take a break and went shopping. A solo shopping trip, a rare treat for me lately, helped clear my mind, and I decided to take a break at a cafe with a terrace. There, something unbelievable caught my eye. It was Bob with an unfamiliar woman and a baby. I quickly ducked out of sight to avoid being seen by Bob. They seemed engrossed in conversation, and suddenly, Bob gently picked up the baby and comforted it with a smile. I couldn't comprehend what I was witnessing. My mind went blank as I continued to watch. He had said he was with friends, but was this woman one of them? Since we married, Bob had introduced me to all his friends, and I had never met this woman before. Then Bob kissed the baby on the cheek. Seeing Bob show such tenderness to a strange baby after claiming he wasn't ready for children with me pained my heart deeply. The thought crossed my mind that perhaps he didn't want children with me because he didn't truly love me. Tears blurred my vision uncontrollably. Could he be cheating on me? The mere idea constricted my chest even more. I snapped a photo of them together, appearing happy with the intention of confronting Bob later. Just as I was preparing to leave, Bob handed a white envelope to the woman and the baby, and they started to depart. I hurriedly made my way home, desperate to avoid encountering Bob. I'm going back to my parents' place for a while, my husband declared, his tone firm as he tossed the divorce papers in my direction. If that's how it's going to be, don't bother coming back. Take these papers and get out. That's how Bob ended our marriage right then and there with those papers hitting the floor between us. I picked them up silently and headed straight to City Hall to file them. Little did Bob know, he would soon regret his decision. My name is Jessica, 28 years old. I had been married to Bob, who is two years older than me for just over a year. Before tying the knot, I worked as a freelance graphic designer from the comfort of home while Bob thrived in the sales department. I met Bob two years ago when I was rebounding from a breakup. A mutual friend introduced us, and despite my initial reluctance to date, Bob, taken by my photos and story, asked me out suggesting we start as friends. As Bob and I spent more time together, I found myself deeply touched by his kindness. Before long, I realized I had fallen in love with him. Once I expressed my feelings, we began dating. Six months into our relationship, Bob proposed, and we joyfully married soon after. Jessica, you're so fortunate, Bob often remarked, boasting about his status as the top salesperson at the company, popular among many. His confidence and charm initially captivated me, though I sometimes wondered about his me to flaunt it. Yet in those early days, I found it endearing. Love truly has a way of blinding us. I cherished my time with Bob, enjoying his company and the life we were building together. Although we hadn't yet started a family, I was content. However, a year into our marriage, an issue arose. Hey Jessica, when are you going to give me a grandchild? That was my mother-in-law who had been pressing the matter ever since our wedding. Living just a short drive away, we visited them often for dinner, where I faced her persistent questioning month after month. We're still young, so we decided to enjoy our time together, I explained calmly. My mother-in-law sighed audibly, her disapproval palpable. You say you're young, but you'll be 30 soon. I'll give you a year to see how it goes. That should be enough time, right? You should start having babies soon, or it might become difficult for you. 
When I married you to this family, I got pregnant right away. Besides, you're just idling at home, aren't you? Since my early days of freelancing from home, my mother-in-law never truly acknowledged my work as a legitimate job. This perception persisted even after I married Bob. Moreover, our decision to postpone having children was primarily driven by Bob's desire for more time together as a couple. No, that's not true. I work diligently from home. I've mentioned before that I earn almost as much as Bob. I defended. Are you sure Bob isn't just covering for you? It seems like you're just passing the time, she retorted. That's not fair. Bob, please say something. I pleaded, hoping for his support. Ha! Oh, Bob rarely spoke up in such situations. His usual stance was, there's no point arguing with mom. She doesn't listen to what I say, so it's best to let her talk and not take it too seriously. Despite my distress, I wished he would show a bit more support. Instead, he lounged on the couch, absorbed in his phone, barely engaged in the conversation. Well, you can do as you please, but since you have plenty of time, you should fulfill your duties as a wife. If you don't have a baby within this year, I may have to ask you to leave, Bob, she asserted. What? I exclaimed. It's simple. Bob is our only child. We need a daughter-in-law who can provide an heir. My husband remained passive, offering no defense while I faced her criticism. I was seething with anger as we returned home. Why didn't you say anything back there? You're the one who keeps insisting we wait to have children. You need to stand up to your mother. I confronted him. I'm sorry. Mom's just old-fashioned. She's stuck on the idea that you should have a baby right after marriage. I understand that, but couldn't you at least speak up to her? Like I mentioned, Mom is stubborn. She won't budge no matter what I say. You know, Jess, sometimes it's best to just nod along and let it pass. But your mother said if I don't get pregnant this year, she'll force us to divorce. Don't worry about that. She's just bluffing. Hey, not because of what she said, but I've actually been thinking about starting a family with you. Why are you hesitant? I'm not against it. I just want more time for us alone. Once we have a baby, you'll be fully occupied with the baby and we won't have much time together, he explained, pulling me into a hug. I found his concern endearing, so I hugged him back. However, despite his assurances at home, he never stood up for me when we visited his parents. After that, his mother began calling me daily, incessantly asking if I was pregnant yet. I grew weary of this relentless pressure. I kept silent about it, not wanting to paint Bob in a negative light, but eventually, I reached my breaking point. I finally disclosed to her that Bob wasn't ready for children yet, but she brushed it off. That's just because you're putting words in Bob's mouth. He would never say something like that, she insisted. That's not true. Bob himself expressed that he wants to wait. I also want a baby, I countered. Really? Bob, is that true? She demanded. Ah uh, no, that's not exactly what I meant. I mean, I do want us to enjoy some more time together, and Jessica's okay with that too. He stumbled through his response. I was taken aback by his words. Well, I agreed with Bob's desire to wait. His response made it sound like I had missled his mother about our intentions regarding starting a family. As expected, his mother shot me a disapproving look after hearing his uncertain answer. See, you agree too. Now please hurry up and have a baby. Don't keep us waiting. In the end, I bore the brunt of the blame. When I confronted Bob at home about his words, he said, I'll handle it better next time but he never brought it up again. Lately, I've been feeling increasingly anxious, wondering why I have to endure this. But there was a reason behind Bob's reluctance to have children. The truth came to light on a particular day off. I was home alone as Bob had his monthly outing with friends. Initially lounging at home, I had planned to visit my in-laws later in the evening, already dreading the inevitable nagging from my mother-in-law. With Bob absent, I took the opportunity to clear my mind with a solo shopping trip. Afterward, I decided to relax at a cafe with a terrace. It was there that I witnessed something unbelievable. Bob was seated with an unfamiliar woman and a baby. I quickly hid to avoid being seen. They appeared to be engaged in a pleasant conversation, and suddenly, Bob gently comforted the baby with a smile. I couldn't comprehend what was unfolding before me. My mind went blank as I continued to watch. Bob had claimed he was out with friends, but who was this woman? He had introduced me to all his friends since we married, and I had never met her. Then to my surprise, Bob kissed the baby on the cheek. Seeing Bob affectionately dote on an unfamiliar baby, despite his insistence on not wanting children with me, deeply wounded me. 
Thoughts raced through my mind. Did he reject having children because he didn't truly love me? Tears blurred my vision as my heart clenched with the possibility of betrayal. Could Bob be cheating on me? I snapped a photo of them, capturing their apparent happiness, intending to confront Bob later. Just as I prepared to leave, Bob handed a white envelope to the woman and the baby, ready to depart. To avoid facing him directly, I hurried back home. Fifteen minutes later, Bob returned. I wasted no time in confronting him. You were out with friends, right? I questioned sharply. Yeah, I was. Why are you acting weird as soon as I get home? Bob replied defensively. Is this woman also a friend? I thrust the photo in front of him. Bob's expression paled instantly. How did you get this photo? He stammered, clearly caught off guard. I happened to come across you guys when I was out. Can you explain what's going on? Are you cheating? I demanded, my voice trembling with a mix of disbelief and anger. No, I'm not cheating, Bob quickly replied. Then what is it, and why did you give her a white envelope at the end? What's that all about? I pressed on, needing answers to make sense of the scene I had witnessed. Bob hesitated, his guilt evident in his expression as he began to explain reluctantly. Well, I meant to tell you eventually, but you know I was quite popular before I met you. I had a few flings and one of those women got pregnant. I was stunned into silence by Bob's revelation. This was the first time I was hearing this story, and it shattered my understanding of our relationship. I had been unaware of this situation even after we married. Apparently, by the time I found out, she was already seven months pregnant, and it was too late for her to consider an abortion. I regretted ignoring her calls all this time. She didn't want to marry me, she just wanted me to acknowledge our child. Out of concern for the child growing up without a father, I agreed to acknowledge our child. We agreed that I would visit once a month. She's also struggling financially, so I've been helping her out with money. My world turned hazy as my husband's words sank in and I sank to my knees. Jessica, are you all right? Bob rushed to my side, but I recoiled from his touch. Just hold on, something doesn't add up here. She was seven months pregnant around the time we got married. Does that mean you were involved with her while we were dating? I demanded, my voice trembling with disbelief and hurt. I already told you, it's not like that. I cut things off completely once I started dating you, Bob insisted. But we were already seeing each other, weren't we? I countered. We were, but we hadn't officially committed yet. Exactly. I can't wrap my head around this. You were pursuing a relationship with me, yet you were involved with someone else. I exclaimed, struggling to process the betrayal. Jessica, I wasn't certain about us at that point. I felt like I didn't have a choice, okay? I never expected her to get pregnant, Bob explained, his voice pleading. But you were still putting yourself in situations where she could get pregnant, weren't you? I pressed, tears welling in my eyes. Well, my husband suddenly faltered. I couldn't believe the irresponsibility my husband was showing. It infuriated me even more that he had kept silent about this for an entire year after our marriage. Could it be, did you refuse to have a child with me because you already had one? I asked, my voice shaking with a mixture of disbelief and anger. My husband flinched at my words and then let out a bitter laugh. No, I plan to have children with you eventually, but like I mentioned earlier, I've been providing financial support to her every month. If we had a baby, I don't know how you would manage work-wise. Financially, it would be quite tough, so I thought I'd wait until I was a bit more stable before having a child with you. I was left dumbfounded by my husband's explanation more than I was angry. You need to tell your mother about this, I said firmly. What? Bob exclaimed, clearly taken aback. Isn't it obvious? She's always pressuring me about having children and you act like you don't know or speak as if I'm the one who doesn't want children. No. I can't possibly tell my parents. They wouldn't understand why I have a child with another woman while I'm married to you. Isn't that just selfish? So, I've had to go along with your selfishness and bear the brunt of it. What are you saying? Are you saying you don't enjoy being with my family? I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying I shouldn't be blamed for something that's not my fault. I'm not saying I don't like my mother-in-law. Why are you acting like this? I've been apologizing, haven't I? And yet you're still complaining. Jessica, you're lucky to be married to someone as successful as me, and you're complaining just because I have a child. It's not a trivial matter. That's enough. There's no point in talking to you anymore. I need to think about my future, so I'm going back to my parents' house for a while. Excuse me, what is this all about? How can you even think like that? 
Do you expect me to accept everything just because I'm your wife? I was stunned by my husband's words. How could he believe that being his wife meant I had to easily accept something as significant as the existence of a child he had kept hidden? I was also furious that he hadn't disclosed this to his parents and had instead portrayed me as the problem in front of my mother-in-law. Do you honestly believe being a wife means unquestioningly accepting everything? Regardless, I'm going back to my parents' house. Perhaps you should take some time to reflect while I'm away. As I spoke and began to rise, he swiftly stood up, retrieved something from our bedroom, and hurled it towards me. If that's how you feel, then don't bother coming back. If you can't accept all of me, you're not my wife. Here are the divorce papers. They're already filled out. Take them and leave immediately. Yes, my husband had thrown divorce papers at me. You've already filled them out? What does this mean? I could understand if you were suggesting divorce but having them ready beforehand. Did you plan this? I couldn't believe it, and I asked him. His response was a scornful laugh. You never know what life will throw at you, so it's best to be prepared for anything, right? I mean, I liked your face, but if you can't accept all of me, then I don't need you anymore. Fortunately, there are plenty of women who want to marry a guy like me. I just need to choose a good one from among them. In other words, I have plenty of options for a wife. His words ignited a fire within me. I needed time to process everything, especially the bombshell about his hidden child, yet here he was implying I was replaceable. It was infuriating beyond belief. Ripping the divorce papers tightly, I shot him a glare. I never imagined you could stoop so low. Fine, I'll grant your wish and divorce you. I'll pack my things when you're not around. We probably won't see each other again. Goodbye. With that, I stormed out of the house, swiftly filled out the divorce papers, and submitted them to City Hall but simply divorcing him wasn't enough. Once back at my parents' house, I recounted everything to my father. The following day, I took a day off work to gather my belongings. Though I mourned the shattered dreams of a happy marriage, I also felt relieved to have severed ties before investing more years with such a man. Wiping away my tears, I resolved to move forward. Just as I finished packing and the delivery service arrived to collect my belongings, my ex-husband called. Hello, Jessica. I was wrong. Forgive me. My ex-husband's voice on the phone was filled with desperation as soon as I answered. I couldn't help but smirk. Forgive you? After everything, weren't you the one who initiated the divorce? I merely followed through on your decision. I retorted coolly. No, that was a mistake. I regret it deeply. You haven't submitted the divorce papers yet, have you? He pleaded. Of course I did. You handed them to me yourself, I replied, incredulous. What? Please let's get married again. I can't live without you, Jessica. I almost chuckled at his feeble attempt. It seemed my conversation with my father had left my ex-husband in a tough spot, and rightfully so. My father held a significant position at a major client of my ex-husband's company, a fact my ex seemed to have overlooked in his haste to divorce me. I took satisfaction in knowing I had caused him some discomfort. Did you lose the contract with my father's company? That's unfortunate, especially for the ace of the sales department. It will be interesting to see how you handle this situation, I remarked casually. No, that's why I want to start over with you. There are plenty of replacements for me out there, right? You should try to find one. With that, I ended the call and allowed myself a broad smile. As I later learned from my father, my ex-husband had been demoted due to his role in losing the major client's contract. It was better than being fired, but his reputation within the company had taken a significant hit. After revealing the truth about his illegitimate child to my in-laws, they initially sought to reconcile him with the child's mother. However, due to her financial situation, they declined to pursue the remarriage, prompting my ex-husband to reach out to me again. Naturally, I refused. Who would willingly return to such a toxic environment? In contrast, life after divorce had treated me well. I moved back to my parents' home, focused on my career, and recently secured a significant contract with a major client. My work was flourishing, and while I kept an open heart for the possibility of meeting someone new in the future, for now, I was content focusing on my professional success.